a glycosylated hemoglobin test is often referred to as an A1C test, and it goes by a number of different names, too. A lot of people call it a glycohemoglobin or a glycolated hemoglobin. Um, I've seen it called a diabetic control index, which is a really good descriptive name for it. Um, a lot of times you'll find it abbreviated just GHB, um, but it's, it's all talking about the same test. We're talking about an A1C test. Um, and, and what that is, is it's a test that's used to monitor the treatment in, in diabetes um, or, or the, effectus, the effectiveness of that treatment. Um, it does not diagnose diabetes. A lot of people will argue that it does, um, but truly it's, it's too, uh, too broad of a test to, to diagnose diabetes alone. Uh, certainly it is one of the tools that um, a physician would use to, to help diagnose diabetes, but, um, but alone it does not diagnose it. Um, it's, it's really to monitor the treatment um, of, of diabetes. Um, what it looks at is a, a long-term index of the patient's average glucose level, and uh, by long-term, I mean about two to three months, and um, the result comes back in the form of a percentage, and that percentage can be uh, directly correlated to an average glucose level over, um, over that time period. And um, there's actually a formula that you can use to figure that out, maybe in a different video. I'll go... I'll go over that, um, but let's talk about the the normal values. And um, for the most part, anything and I'm missing an arrow here, but um, anything up to six or seven percent is considered normal. In anything over that, um, you're likely to be diabetic. It doesn't mean that you're diabetic. Um, there's other reasons you can have an elevated um, A1C result, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I had one physician explain it to me that anything over 6%, your patient is very likely to be diabetic, and anything over 7% is when that patient would likely be started on insulin. Of course, there's, um, you know, it's unique in each case, and there's a number of people out there who I'm sure have an A1C that's well over 7% um, that, uh, that haven't been diagnosed with diabetes. Um, that uh, is not on insulin or any oral hypoglycemics, and I'm sure they do just fine. Um, but studies are becoming very conclusive, um, specifically with the with the six percent more so than with the seven percent. Um, but suggesting that anything over six percent, um, you you really need to consider at least the possibility of being diabetic, and you need to consider um, starting treatment, um, and. Um, I thought there was one other thing I wanted to add there, but I think that's about it. Um, so at least that gives you gives you an idea um, of what what normal ranges are. Um, let's talk about the reasons that um, uh, A1C would be either increased or decreased, and I think it's obvious that you would have an increased uh, A1C if um, you're a diabetic. Um, but um, specifically if you're a newly diagnosed diabetic because you're not, uh, blood sugars aren't under control yet. Uh, once they do get under control, hopefully your A1C will, will decrease and get back uh, within a normal range. Um, the, other, the other reason, um, if you're a diabetic that's just um, either unstable or um, you're just not reactive or reacting to uh, the medication, um, a, a poorly controlled diabetic, uh, a diabetic who's non-compliant, um, all examples of why you might still have an elevated A1C. Um, another reason, um, there, in, you know, for the most part, um, if, if you have an elevated A1C, it's, it's very likely to be diabetes, but um, there, there's a number of reasons that that you could have it elevated. That has nothing to do with diabetes. Um, it's related to hyperglycemia, but it's non-diabetic hyperglycemia. Um, some examples would be like uh, stress. Um, you know, if you're going through a, a stressful time in your life, um, might be over a couple month uh, time period, and and that could lead to an elevated A1C. Um, things like Cushing's, um, and I won't go into Cushing's 
too much here. Maybe I'll do that in another video, but Cushing's leads to an increased blood sugar. Uh, pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor on the adrenal glands of your kidneys um, that causes your kidneys to uh, secrete um, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which lead to an increased blood sugar. And uh, like you know, like you know now, an increased blood sugar over time leads to an increased uh, A1C result. Um, another example would be uh, if you're if you're on steroids, uh, specifically corticosteroids, because corticosteroids increase blood sugar. Um, and same thing here, increased blood sugar leads to that increased uh, result over time. Um, I just uh, I just read this the other day, and it makes sense. I I, I I guess I never realized this before, but um, if you have a splenectomy, um, you could have an increased A1C, and the reason is because if you if your spleen is removed, well, understand what the what the spleen does. Um, it destroys uh, red blood cells that come into it, um, and and essentially what it's going to do is decrease the lifespan of those red blood cells. So if you don't have a spleen, um, you the lifespan of those uh, red blood cells will will be increased. So we'll put increased lifespan, and um, because you have an increased lifespan, you have more time for a process that's called hemoglobin um, glycosylation, uh, which which ultimately is um, what's leading to this this increased blood sugar. And again, same thing I've said probably five or six times now, that increased blood sugar is what um, leads to that increased A1C. The other thing, uh, let's see if I can find the same color or a similar color at least, I think it's the same, um, is uh, pregnancy. And that gets into the whole gestational diabetes, which I won't go into, but um, of course, uh, if, if you did get into that, um, it's of course a reason enough to have the increased blood sugar, um, and and hopefully that will go away after after the the birth of the of the baby. But um, it doesn't always. Um, but that's a that's another story. So um, let's talk about reasons that it would be decreased. Um, hemolytic anemia, and I'm, I'll just write anemia. Um, but that is really. Um, the exact opposite of what we were talking about down here. Uh, with hemolytic anemia, the red blood cells are being destroyed, uh, so the lifespan is decreased, which means there's less time for that glycosylation um, process to happen, um, which would lead to decreased blood sugars. Um, another example would be like chronic uh, blood loss. Chronic blood loss. Um, just because the red blood cell survival um, rate is shortened. Um, and, and the last example that I want to put on here is um, chronic renal failure. And the reason for that is because these patients have uh, reduced hemoglobin levels as a result of a lack of erythropoietin. Um, if you have renal failure, um, your, as you probably know, your kidneys um, secrete uh, something called erythropoietin, um, and so if that is that's affected, um, the A1C ultimately would be affected too. Um, so hopefully that gives you somewhat of an idea of what the A1C test is for. Um, like I said, it does not diagnose diabetes, um, but it it monitors the treatment of diabetes.